Good evening, everyone. This is Dwight Gibson, Jr. I'm a field technician with Xfinity. I just want to go over some of the basic features of the XM1 meter. And this is specifically for uh, the technicians that's from where I'm from, basically Baltimore. Um, I haven't really been uh, I haven't really been a technician out there that had a meter or yeah, I haven't really had a meter or never ever since I've been a technician in Baltimore, I've never had a meter. I'll just put it like that. So I just kind of want to go over some um, information on the XM1 meter and help everyone knows that works with Xfinity as a tech um, understand how to operate it. Now, I don't have Comcast. I don't have Comcast at my house. I don't know why this apartment doesn't have Comcast. It's only ready made for uh, direct TV. So I would hook it up and show you um, exactly, you know, some things about how to read it. I'm not, excuse me, I'm not going to go through everything, but I am going to show some things. All right. So first off, this is the XM one right here. This is what it looked like when you get it you know back front the top when you get one fresh it has a cap all right the cap covers the top or whatever and also you can uh screw the jumper onto the top of the cap you know um not to in case it get too hot or you don't want to break the tip of this you know you can kind of screw it on top of the cap like a barrel it look like a barrel a little bit but anyway you can just put your jump on it you want to make sure your jumper is about seven feet you know, if not, it's not gonna read right. You know, about seven, sorry, I said seven feet, seven inches. So it was not gonna read right. So first thing is the bottom, you cuts on. All right, so you, you can use this as a charger too. Let's say you're a technician, you out, you lost your uh, car charger or something like that, and you need to charge your phone, you can plug it in the bottom right here. Of course, you got your ethernet because this has Wi-Fi in it. So you can read an XM1 maybe on a desktop or a laptop if you can get like a, uh, some kind of um, link or something to it and of course the plug to charge it and this is how you cut it on so you just press it in and it goes in and then it comes on all right so you wait for it so as you can notice it has the Wi-Fi here you cannot connect to the new XM1 meter without the Wi-Fi all right so you have to go to it now there's always a default password with the XM1 and that can be getting that can you can get that by your supervisor if you ever have one or if you'll get one um, it comes with the default password for the Wi-Fi and your um, your supervisor can get that to you so you can log, log into the Wi-Fi it's gonna say whatever XM it is like XM1 uh, whatever whatever all right so let's let's go here so what you do what you want to do is excuse me all right let's go back into it all right, so what you want to do is, all right, this lets you know off the top. Like, if you're just trying to know if it got signal and you don't feel like going to the tap or you can't reach the tap, um, we can also go into that, how you don't have to really go to the tap. You know, in Baltimore, you have a lot of places where you can just reach the tap easily. But out here, where I'm at, Utah, the tap is most of the time in other neighbors' yards or somewhere hard to get to. So instead of trying to read the tap and by trying to go through all of the forest and the jungle to get to it, it's a way that you can read it. All right, so of course your power, your Wi-Fi pops up. When it pops up, you can um, find it, and then your DS is blinking, of course, like you know, just like your typical uh, XB3, it'll blink real slow if there's no signal. But if the DS, the downstream, has signal, it bump right in, and then it goes to the, the upstream. It bumps right in, then it goes to status. When it gets to status, it lets you know that the, it's ready to read. You know, it's gonna tell you everything about it. Charge is just letting you know, like when you plug it up and trying to charge it, it'll be red. When it's not red, it'll be fully charged. So it gives you to let you know what level the, the battery's on, you know. So, you know, my meter kind of is in the middle. So I probably won't charge it. I probably will charge it. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's that. So, of course, it's hooked to nothing. So it's on DS is blinking like this. All right. So, so the Wi Fi is on. Let's look for the Wi Fi. So it's going to look like this. All right, so you go into it. Of course, got your Wi-Fi on. All right, and 
and there, there it is, X and one, and it has a number behind it, dash, whatever it's gonna be, all right? Um, and then when you go, when you do that, you go back, all right? Hopefully it don't conk out on me. I gotta log it in. It might take me there. It look like it's gonna take me there. All right, so normally this happens too. If you uh, do the Wi-Fi for this, it will just, um, it'll straight up just, all right, hold on, let me tell you in a second. It'll straight up just take a long time if you're just using the XM1 Wi-Fi, you don't have your cellular data activated, it'll just load for a long time, and then it'll, just, then it'll come through because it still acts as a Wi-Fi, so it'll, it'll come through, but it'll take a while. So what you wanna do, because I just realized what I didn't do, or what I do sometimes. I deactivate the uh, cellular data. All right, let me check that. All right, so my stuff is on, all right. So let's go back. Sorry, my phone is broken and old. All right, so anyway, so it takes you there. It's, of course, it's green, letting you know you hooked to the Wi-Fi. All right, when you first cut it on, of course, it's gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna ask you for your BP, and then it's gonna take you here, and of course you hit continue, of course your, your name and all that's gonna be on it. You hit continue, uh, if you have any, it gives you the, the okay, I'm on 36% battery, tell you the battery, all that stuff. Say no job selected. All right, so down here, you got your firmware, so what you wanna do when you first get one, you wanna upgrade it. All right, so anyway, you go to change job to find, to find a job, because it's gonna say no job selected. It's not going to read right because normally you can just hook the meat up and it'll read whatever signal coming through it. It won't even. So you just got to go to change job and whatever job you at, you would click on it. And then you go back and then it'll take you back to the main screen and it'll take you here. So then, like I said, when it's on status, when the status is green and it's solid green, then you're ready to read. So spectrum, of course, is... The first thing, and it's not gonna come up because there's no spectrum, really. See, it's down here. The spectrum's way down here. Just letting you know the overall frequency and flux and the line all the way from the tap to the um, to the ground block at the house. Or just even if it's just at the tap itself, from Comcast to the tap itself. All right, and then what you wanna do too, you got another one. Sometimes the spectrum could be off. For example, let's say, let's say, uh, all right, right here. If your spectrum was going across like that, you have a big old dent in it, like it's going way down here, and then it comes up and it's just even, it's going to be that the tap is bad or the, something in the line is, is a noise in the line or a puncture in the line. Um, so you want to go from um, you want to go from fitting to fitting to know when you're where the, the spectrum is off at. All right, so you you know, so we, I'll go into that in a, in a minute about the tap. All right, so here I let you know. So if you want to find out where the reading is at, read, reading is at from the tap, you can just, just click on whatever it is. If you hook it up from, let's say you hook it up from bedroom one, you know, and you like, hey, I don't, the, the signal failing, you can do it the, I guess you can call it the lazy way, but you can do it the easy way too, and just click on tap, and it'll read whatever whatever's coming straight out of the tap. And you don't even have to climb up there, because you might have a tap that's way somewhere in somebody's yard somewhere and you like yo i'm not i can't get to that tap man the neighbor's not home you can't get in that yard you can't get in that yard or they got a dog there's no access you can't get back there to even get to the tap just click on tap um you're trying to get the read from the ground block you can click on ground block you know media about whatever you labeled the boxes you know you can click on that and get the reading from that too or you can you know make choose the custom okay so that it makes it easier it makes it easier to read it and you don't have to do too much all right, so you got the doxes too. This is where you get your uh, your main reading. So normally, of course, your downstream is going to be here. Whatever tap you're dealing with, 23, 14, 12, whatever, is going to show right here on the readings right here. It's going to be like four or five different ones. And then your upstream is going to be the same thing. Now, if your, up, if your downstream is good, if the tap, come, I mean, the, the reading coming out of the downstream real good, like 14 or whatever the tap, is, tap value is, say 23, you got reading between 21 and 23 here, and then your upstream is like 47, you have a bad tap. 
All right, so because by the time you get to the house, the upstream is already going to be like, as soon as you put a split on it, it's off. But your downstream is still going to be good. So it's a tap, bad tap. So that number 47, if it's 47, whatever, you want to look out for that's a bad tap off the nothing. All right, so next, uh, flux. All right, the flux not going to come up. But normally, it's going to um, it's just going to be like a bunch of uh, zigzaggy lines up and down, up and down. Um, like on a, a graph is going to show if uh it's also going to be a bad tap if it says no bonding like you might have a few uh a few of the fluxes showing but if it say one of the one of them or two of them say no bonding or not bonded then that means it's a bad tap you might still can get signal through it but you can write it off as a, you can put it off as a ticket and not fail the job and be like yo it's a bad tap yo like you know what i'm saying like you need to put a ticket in Somebody need to come, tap maintenance need to come. So you can get, get a pass on that. The ingress is here, of course. Um, I haven't really done any readings with the ingress. I haven't learned that part yet, so I'm not gonna lie. All right, so that's I'm just showing you. All right, the QAM and analysis is if you have a bad tap also. Like if your reading is, like I said, um, a 47 upstream or whatever like that and your downstream is real good like you really like something real funny you all day long trying to figure out how to fix the how to fix the um, upstream downstream on this thing isn't the lines not bad just that in the third you just frustrated you want to quit the job you want to close the job out anyway you you there for like five hours trying to figure out what was making it bad so it, like i said that when i reading this 47 upstream and your, your downstream is still good it looked like the same level as the tap value you got a bad tap um, of course, you know if your downstream is not reading the same thing as the uh, tap value, you got a you got a bad tap. That's self-explanatory. But you want to go here, the channels, the three different channels you're gonna look for is I think uh, 17, 17, 79, and 114. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll correct myself later. But you're gonna look, and you're gonna look for one of those three to be red. Right now, all of these are green, but and one of them you can't uh, is not gonna be on here. So right. So you would have to uh, type it in. Where is it? Yeah, you have to go to the search, and then you would type in what you're looking for, what channel you're looking for. You know, you put, you would type in channel whatever, and then um, you just go to click on channel, and it'll pop up. All right, let me try to give a demonstration. Hold up. Just type in uh, 17 for channel, and then the it'll go to channel 17 for you. Uh, which channel isn't on here. So you got 14 on here, 17. Um, see if 79 on here. 79 on here and then 114. All right, so 114 is on here. So those are the channels. Correct me if I'm wrong later, but those are the channel, three channels you're looking for for a bad tap. And if you have any red on any one of those, it's definitely more than, more than just a hunch is a bad tap. All right, so you have a, your other uh, DOCSIS 3.1, the more updated one. It shows you the spectrum also, all right? And wait for it to load up, even though nothing won't really come up. All right, so this is a better better understanding to read, too. I'll wait for it to get, so it gives a check mark when it's done. It give a check mark, so we'll wait, or it might not even come in, because it's not hooked up to anything. All right, so it's taking a minute, probably not going to read. So I'm going to just go ahead anyway. All right, so of course you know it's not hooked up. It's going to give you this crazy number, negative 46 or whatever. You know, um, the megahertz, I don't really know how to read like that. But I do know right here, your dB coming in, this is going to be your, um, your downstream. And then your upstream, of course. And then I forgot what that is in the back right here. This might be your... Um, Actually, this might be your downstream. This might be your um, down. This might be your SNR. This might be your downstream itself, and this might be the upstream. I think that's it. Yeah, like that. It's easier to read it when is when I'm exactly like. Come on, yeah. All right, so try to go out, go back in. You don't kick me out. All 
All right, so while that's doing that, loading back up. All right, so you also get a case with this. This is the case, XM1. All right, so you just, of course, put the front side towards the plastic right here. You know, you put the jump in there. All right, you just close it up and then zip up. You know, self-explanatory zip up. I get it. I got one hand. Hold up. Sorry, my video is not as professional as it could be, but I feel like it at least need to be. It come out some kind of way because I know a lot of a lot of the brothers over East Coast. Don't even have meters, you know what I'm saying? I, I never had a meter. I never had a meter till I came over to the West Coast. And it's like, heck, I got a meter. And I know that brother's out there doing jobs with no meters. Straight, you know, exit down, down to in it. So, um, yeah, so you got this, you know, you got your strap to wrap it, to hold it over your shoulder. And of course, you got your, you know, pull it, pull it down and you easily get to all of this, whatever. And uh, back to this, cut back on. All right, so where was we at? Uh, the doxes. You can do an outlet check, and it'll tell you whichever outlet is bad. So that's, you know, in the house. Um, I haven't gone to the ping and all that, but I do know that the ping has a lot to do with if you got a modem and a customer's complaining about why they're not getting their gig speeds or something like that, has a lot to do with the ping or latency it's called. So I this might I might have to um do some study on that. Um and the rest of this stuff I haven't gone into. Okay, so to the basic things you really need to you really need for the meter is this DOCS is 3.1 if this docs is not reading right or is like not looking right, looking kind of funny, you want to go to the docs is 3.1, give you more channels to let you know um, in more detail, you know, what the signal looking like. And then your flux, you want to go to that too, because your signal might be good here and here, but you're like, why still failing? Or if you do the, uh, the, the home integrity, it might tell you the flux is bad and it give you a bunch of numbers, but here it just straight give you like green or red and let you know. Um, one of the channels is off. So you might want to um, check each line, you know, go to each fitting, check it, line to line, change fittings, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it also could be a spectrum sometimes without realizing it. And the spectrum specifically deals with the tap itself, the signal getting to that tap before it even get to the house. And uh, like again, your channel scan, all right? Like I said, this is very important. If you cannot get to the tap, man, you just hit that tap, but you just hook it up to wherever the feed is at the ground block whatever even in a house in a basement somewhere in a cut the line popping out of the corner real stupid you just hook it up to that you know what i'm saying as soon as you get your status up just hit tap and it'll read the tap all right and uh, it'll read that line itself it'll read the tap and that line also the other one the outlet it'll read every outlet okay outlet check it'll read every outlet that's hooked up in that split or on that um amplifier or whatever to the ground block it'll read whatever it is all right, so that's that. All right, so you see what's going on, and that's how it is, man. It's the XM1. All right, um, forgive me again. My video is not as professional as it could be, but this is just for my brothers in Baltimore, you know, who talk like me, sound like me, all like me, just trying to make it day by day, trying to figure out better ways to do that job and brothers that don't even have a meter even know how to operate the meter. Um, so I just wanted to do that, man. Um, yeah, if I find anything else out, I'll just let y'all know, all right?